Helen Coonan, thanks very much for your time this afternoon. We saw in the record trade surplus figures yesterday, again, confirmation of the importance of mining to the Australian economy. But as you know, there are a number of changes underway in terms of the energy market, in terms of some of the big mining companies themselves, uh, like BHP, uh, you know, changing their investment patterns when it comes to reducing emissions. So what do you see in this role uh, as the future of the mining sector in Australia? OK, well, David, I think that a strong mining sector is good for Australia. It's certainly good for the economy, it's good for regional Australia, good for investment and jobs and certainly good for exports and uh, the budget, as we've seen, as you point out. Um, it obviously has its challenges and I think that one of the challenges we do face is how to gradually move to a low emission economy. And that, of course, means that uh, whilst the Minerals Council is neutral as to what technologies are used to get there, there can be differences of opinion, obviously, between members. But uh, because we are technology neutral, uh, we encourage all technologies. We don't think any technology should be off limits, including uranium uh, and nuclear power. Uh, we think that all of that adds up to a pretty interesting mix for the Minerals Council going forward, and yet there are big uniting issues so that it is important that the industry and all of those in the industry can speak with a strong voice. Well, just to, just to pick that up, uh, are you saying the Minerals Council is not fighting to prolong the, the life of coal necessarily? Well, look, coal is still a very important technology. Uh, it's playing a very big role in our exports. Last year it was the biggest single export. It still provides 70% of uh, Australia's uh, power requirements. So uh, coal is obviously still a very important technology, but even coal and those in the industry are moving to a lower emissions uh, way of doing business and there's lots and lots of R&D going on and very interesting and innovative uh, new technologies and ways of looking at how coal will continue to deliver for the foreseeable future. But uh, we support all yeah. technologies. We support renewables with storage. We support gas. And as I said, uh, we support carbon capture, utilisation and storage, and we also support a very good look at, uh, at nuclear energy. Just on that, because uh, you have welcomed the government uh, now beginning a parliamentary inquiry into the possibility of nuclear energy down the track. One of the big hurdles there is cost. It is seen as a more, cost, uh, more costly option, uh, certainly down the track, as other uh, energy forms become cheaper. Do you see that being overcome? Do you see nuclear being cost competitive? Well, look, I think it's a long time since we had a really good look at uh, how this technology uh, would sit in, in Australia and there's been so much in the way of technological advancement that uh, we really do encourage a discussion around new ways of delivering this technology, perhaps you know, small modular units. Uh, they're very important for perhaps remote mining. Uh, it's important to look at different ways of cooling. Sand cooling, for example, is another technology. So all of the old concerns about nuclear being big, expensive, uh, along the coastline, uh, impacting in ways that uh, people would find unacceptable, I think deserve a relook. And it is important that nuclear power uh, is near a grid. That's probably not all that much different to power stations as we know them today. So it is time, I think, to look at the new technology. And obviously, uh, if it's uh, an acceptable way to go forward, economies of scale usually kick in uh, so that in the end it probably will be uh, cheaper, cleaner and very effective in ways that we haven't been for a very long time. Uh, yesterday the government announced the uh, inquiry, well, changes to the, its gas policy, including uh, an inquiry into or a, a move towards a gas reservation policy. It's also considering direct price controls as well. How do you feel about that level of government intervention? Uh, well, look, coming um, from my background, David, out of a, uh, out of a coalition uh, 
Liberal government, Liberal coalition government, uh, I don't like uh, that kind of government intervention as a matter of principle, but uh, I do think that it is important that we look at how to secure you know, cheaper, more affordable prices. Gas has a big part to play in that. And perhaps a reservation might be something that uh, the industry can live with. Uh, Price controls are probably uh, another step, of course, that you wouldn't want to take. And we want, of course, the industry always in government, industry, um, government always wants industry uh, to actually self uh, sort these problems, actually get to a point where they're providing low, you know, efficient, low efficient uh, power and they're providing something that people can afford. It's reliable, affordable, available and sustainable. But do you share the concern of uh, the gas industry in particular that it might scare away other investors, perhaps other investors in the resources sector more broadly, to have that sort of uh, government intervention? Well, government intervention as a principle is not something to be encouraged, but if an industry uh, is seen to require it in order to be able to meet all of its obligations, well, then you have to look at some of these settings. But uh, there's a lot of investment going on certainly in the mineral sector, which of course is the Minerals Council remit, uh, a lot of investment going on and we're seeing now the great effects of the, uh, the production boom as uh, we see those amazing figures yesterday with uh, the mineral sector now making up 58% of all exports. So it really is uh, horses for courses in these things, I think, but industry can do a lot to help themselves. Now, Helen Coonan, you sit on a number of boards right now, including uh, Crown, uh, and you'd be well aware, of course, of all that's been going on there over the last week with the um, allegations and the stories that have been running. Can I just ask, company directors do have obligations under the corporation's law to ensure that firms uh, they oversee mitigate risks that might expose them to criminal activity. What then can you tell us about these two um, investment vehicles or accounts that Crown set up, yeah, Riverbank and Southbank? What are they for? Well, David, um, uh, thank you for asking the question. You'll appreciate that uh, there have been a couple of very detailed statements being made that have been made over the last week or so, and I think as recently as yesterday, uh, that are authorised by the board. Now, I'm one director and I'm not authorised on behalf of the board to answer any more questions. I won't be able to go there and to provide any further detail just now. But you have signed that public statement you referred to as one of those board directors saying that all of these allegations uh, are, are misleading, are wrong, but you can't actually explain that now yourself as to why that's the case? Well, there's some uh, explanation that's been um, contained within the statements, and uh, I think that if you go to those statements, you find some elaboration on, uh, on the issues to which, uh, to which you refer, uh, but I'm not in a position to answer well, any Well, with respect, not, not, on these, not on these companies, Southbank and Riverbank, and whether there has been an investigation underway, including AFP and Austrac investigators, looking at whether these accounts have been used by drug traffickers to, to launder money. I mean, can you say that's, that's untrue? Well, David, what I can say is that I'm not a spokesperson for the board and all of these matters are being dealt with by properly authorised processes uh, through the Crown Management and the Crown Board. Well, Helen Coonan, we'll uh, see how this all unfolds as well. We appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, David. Great to speak with you.